Well, howdy, folks. This is David Weiss, author of the Blender Special Effects Workshop. And I'm thinking the next workshop video is going to be on poly-based modeling. And with that in mind, I thought I'd throw together a character design. I don't know if this is the character I'll ultimately use for the video, but anyway, when I'm starting out with a character design, I usually start with a real simple shape. In this case, it was kind of like a banana or a football. And then I swipe in a lot of, you know, I kind of work curves against straight lines and try to put a lot of life and motion into the into the lines to sort of, you know, evoke some action and some, some the, probably the best word's life. I mean, I'm, I want the creature to, or the character to look like they're alive. And so I kind of play around with um, different contours until it just basically feels right. <laughs> I guess this guy's kind of a he's kind of a goat kind of guy. Um I guess when I started I was I was thinking about something along the lines of what's the guy who was in the Star Wars movies Sub Sub Sabolia or something. I, I can't remember the guy's name, but um anyway, something along those lines. Kind of a man goat type creature. Uh all this drawing was done in the GIMP. I'm a big GIMP guy. I don't use Photoshop. Um, you know, I'm real big on open source software and the latest uh, version of GIMP's got some really, really cool improvements uh, for people who use a, a, a tablet, which <laughs> obviously I do to try to draw this with a mouse would be <laughs> it'd be pretty tough. But, um, you know, just workflow stuff. Like, for example, in GIMP now you can press the space bar to pan around in your, in your uh, image. You can do what I just did right there, which is hit the Z key and draw a lasso and it automatically zooms into that spot. Um, using the erase tool here a little bit, um, but mostly it was just the paintbrush, actually. And yeah, and in fact, another really cool thing on GIMP now is you can use the um, um, the bracket keys just like you can in Photoshop to dynamically increase or decrease the size of the brush, which is huge. Just a huge improvement there. Um, once I get things blocked in, you know, I like to make the brush a little bigger and kind of get some shade and going on to sort of chisel out the contours and the the uh, the three-dimensionality. Is that a word? Dimensionality? I guess it is. Um, we all know goats have whiskers. <laughs> so, and like I said, I, I don't know if this is the design I'll ultimately use for the, for the modeling video, but here I'm taking the smear. I use the smear tool a lot. I don't tend to use the blur tool much, but the smear tool really gives everything kind of a painterly look almost makes it feel like oil paint to me. And if you're trying to do a Frazetta homage, um, get to know the smear tool. <laughs> It'll serve you well. And, of course, everyone knows that goat men wear cloaks. <laughs> so it's really hard to describe what I'm doing here when it's playing at four times the original <laughs> speed. But um, there he is. You notice it's almost like an orthographic type of view too. I wanted to shoot him from a complete profile, so it's not a very interesting pose. But the the idea was that if I like the design, I'm gonna want to do a I'm gonna put this beside another image that's a full on front shot, um, make everything line up, and then use that as the basis in Blender for creating a 3D model. So add a little black to the background here, obviously, to just kind of. Give us some space. Oh, by the way, there's another tool that's really cool. If you're into um, old John Buscema comic book art, you've got to try out the uh, the GIMP um, India Ink uh, tool. I, I'm not, I, I assume it's called the Ink tool, but okay, i got to put my name on there, and I think that's it.